What's up, everybody? Sunday Sessions, episode nine, here to deliver you a ton of content about scaling, making additional money, selling products on Amazon. For any of you just joining, welcome. Super excited to be here. For any on the YouTube side, post your comments in the chat. We're here for about 20 minutes every single Sunday, dumping a ton of information on you, answering your questions, allowing you to build successful full-time hustles, side hustles, part-time hustles, whatever hustle you wanna get into, but building e-commerce hustles to help generate additional revenue so you can pay off that car loan, get out of student debt, buy that rental property you've been looking into, put $10,000 into GME, whatever you wanna do, you can do it because you have additional form of revenue coming in, filling your pockets with money. That's the end of the game here, it's 2021. Most people do not have one form of revenue, one stream of income, and the people that do have one stream of income, they're hurting. They are hurting. You know what time it is? It's Q&A time. So throw your questions in the comments. I'll be happy to answer any of them fully transparent. There's nothing I hold back. I think that it's important to provide a ton of information to you because when we first got started, shit like this didn't exist. Things like this just weren't out there. They weren't available to us. And even today, they are available, but there's so much of it, it's very easy to get overwhelmed. I don't want anybody to get overwhelmed. I want this to be a smooth process, smooth sailing, where you're getting the information that you need immediately so you can then run with it and take action so you can grow your business quicker than you would if you were doing it by yourself. That's my goal. So Ricardo said, why do you do wholesale more than private label? Isn't it possible to scale private label like how you do wholesale? Yeah, it's possible. So for anybody who's, who's just new here or just joining us or hasn't been here for a while, our business, we sell on Amazon. We operate 100% fulfilled by Amazon business, FBA. And 85% of our business is wholesale, meaning that we purchase products from brands, manufacturers, distributors, and we resell them on Amazon for a profit. The other 15% of our business is private label, meaning we manufacture our own products, we create listings for them, and then we sell them on Amazon for a profit. Now this gentleman asked why we focus more on wholesale than private label. And my firm belief and my experience shows that building a successful wholesale business is much easier and much quicker to scale than it is a private label company, right? Let's just paint the picture here. So private label, gotta create a product, right? So you spend a month researching it, month on the low end, month researching it, you know, contacting manufacturers, submitting or getting test orders. So let's even say two months, getting test orders, then you finally decide like this is the product. So two months are gone. Now you gotta wait another month for it to get shipped to you. So now you're three months in and it's getting received at Amazon. Now you're three and a half months in. Now you gotta run ads, drive traffic to it. Now you're four months in. So it's like four months from today, if you were to get started, you won't even start seeing sales. And then if you're a new seller, Amazon's gonna keep some of that money for the first couple of weeks. So now you're five months in and you're not seeing any money yet, right? But with wholesale, you literally can place a wholesale order today and see profits in two to three weeks. You know, you will have a paycheck from Amazon two to three weeks, making sales, making money. That's what I'm about, making money. So. I'm not saying that anybody should do one or the other. I'm a firm believer that you should do both. And what we do, and most people that we mentor do, is they generate lots of revenue and lots of profits by doing wholesale. And then when they have a better understanding of the marketplace, they better understand the end consumer, they understand what niches they should get into. Then they go and take 5,000, 7,000 of their profits from wholesale and invest in a private label product. For us, that's what worked best. And for a lot of the people that we work with directly, that works best for them. So Mata said, hey man, how do I know which brands will make trademark complaints against me? You wanna look at the third Keepa chart and that third Keepa chart will give you all the information. So you wanna look at like the number of sellers and then look historically, right? So everybody's Keepa chart should be set by default in your settings on Keepa to one year because COVID messed with the whole market. You can no longer look at three months of a Keepa chart. It does not make sense. You need to have your default settings on Keepa to one year. And now you need to analyze that and hover under that third Keepa chart and look for sellers. So if it's consistently one seller for 11 months out of the year and then there's two sellers for the other month, high chance that that company's sending out infringement complaints. 
right? So you're looking for consistency with multiple sellers on the listing and then it's okay. Then your team can make a decision. You can make a decision like, okay, this listing looks legit. I'm probably not going to kick, get kicked off of it. Let me buy some inventory and see what I can start selling. Now, does that mean that that's always absolutely 100% correct? No, no, there's, there's always flaws in the system. So if I'm ever concerned, I just lighten my order a little bit. I don't go as heavy, so I don't get hit as hard with my cost of goods. Instead of putting $3,000 out, I might only put $300 out. Because by the time I get that IP complaint, could probably sell through half the inventory, then could probably come to an amicable solution with the, with the manufacturer to move the rest of that inventory. How long does it take to receive ordered product sample? So like I was saying before, it can take up to 30 days. You know, it can, sometimes it could even take longer, sometimes less. Um, but that's something you just need to communicate with your manufacturer. Like, hey, hey, manufacturer, uh, what's the estimated delivery time of this? You know, and if they say seven weeks, you say, okay, is there a way I could expedite that a little? I'd like to get it in four weeks. And then they say, yeah, it's going to cost you an extra $100. And then you say, okay, that works for me. And then they send it out a little more express than they would. But you got to communicate. Listen, 99% of any of my problems that I've ever caused in my entire life are from a lack of communication, whether it's family problems, friend problems, work problems, any problem is a lack of communication. So just be transparent, open your mouth, talk, use your voice, and when you use your voice to communicate with people, whether it's personal relationships, business relationships, mountains can get moved it's crazy what happens when all you do is open your mouth and communicate exactly how you're feeling what you're feeling and what you want just the floodgates open up and so much opportunity presents itself it's wild all right yes yeah, seer said can you help me i want wholesalers or distributors to get ungated in toys yeah try ee distribution for toys uh, that's a little nugget for you yes yeah, seer this guy said is selling on amazon a scam no, it is not a scam. There's literally next week. Today is the 4th of April on the 10th of April, literally just on a whim. About two weeks ago, we started talking about it. We're doing a meetup in Orlando or in Miami. 150 people are going to sign up or show up. It's not even it's free. There's no you don't even have to sign up. It's free. 150 people who are literally changing their lives. What's the best way to start with FBA without losing too much money test orders so you want to go in and test the waters with your test orders if that makes sense right so you don't want to go in and be like all right this product's doing great i could sell 600 of them let me take all my money that i have to invest and purchase 600 units of this because it's going to be amazing because the the Amazon market is very much like the stock market or the cryptocurrency market. There's peaks and valleys, it ebbs and flows. Bitcoin can change three, four thousand dollars in a day. On Amazon, the keep a chart, the price can drop three, four dollars in a day. So you gotta be mindful of that. So don't put all your eggs in one basket. Do some test orders. If you think you could sell 600, start with 48. Maybe go to 60. Test the waters first get real data real data is the best data real company sales data is what drives amazon growth by understanding the current inventory that you sell so do a test order if the 60 work out great then go heavier maybe get 240 maybe 480 if those work out great then you get 600 you don't want to put all your eggs in one basket that says he really looks forward to the sunday sessions when he's packing shipments take notes from that guy who is that capital city tech take notes from that guy homeboy right now is it's sunday i don't know what 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 country he's in but over here in, in new jersey it's sunday 6 10 p.m homeboy's packing orders on a sunday that's that side hustle 101, right? When most people are watching the game or this guy's packing orders, listen to me talk about Amazon business growth. That's what I'm talking about. That is what I'm talking about. All right, Matas said, I know from following you guys that you also sell in the UK. Do you source all products in the US and ship to UK or do you buy from the UK and sell in the UK? Um, so any, any sales that happen in other countries for us, our inventory is sourced in the United States. So we purchase inventory in the US and ship it to other countries. I feel that the UK market, a lot of these other markets, they 
want the products that we have, but you can't get them in the United Kingdom. Nobody can get them in the United Kingdom because they're US based products, right? So what we do is we source them in the US and we ship them to other countries. Damn, this sun is beaming right now. This YouTube video is just beaming on me. My face is super bright. Yerbal said, what sales number should he hit? He's talking revenue, should he hit before he, or to start using a repricer? So what sales number should he hit to start using a pricer? I think it's less about a sales number and more about quantity of SKUs. So I think anything over 10 SKUs warrants a repricer because the amount of time you go in, you could, you could have to reprice 10 SKUs seven times a day to be buy box prioritized. So any time you can save from spending, looking at these products, changing their prices manually on Amazon, even if it's an hour a week, three hours a week, it adds up an hour a week times four weeks, that's four hours a month. Time If you're three hours a week, now you're talking 12 hours a month, it adds up, the repricer is super worth it. You definitely wanna use a repricer to manage your SKUs. It will save you tons of time. My friend, do you recommend to have a website to open an account with a wholesaler of or manufacturer it's listen it won't hurt to have one is it required no it is not required do some companies ask to see one yes they do so can it hurt no is it a requirement no it's not a requirement so what i would do if you're getting a lot of companies that are asking for one i would just go on fiverr have someone create a WordPress website. It'll cost you 200 bucks, very small investment. Have them list some products on there, put your company information, and bickety bam. But you do not want to deceive the suppliers, wholesalers, distributors, and manufacturers that you're doing business with. You do not want to deceive them by saying, hey, I'm looking to purchase your inventory so I could sell it on said website and then hit them with the link to your website. You do not want to do that, right? Because that is not good for relationship building. And at the end of the day, the most important portion of this business is the relationship opportunities. You have to be building relationships or you're, you're screwed. So lying to a distributor or manufacturer or brand from the rip is not helpful for anybody. Oh, this is a great question. Rizzo, is it best to start with books, DVDs, and board games when first selling on FBA? I think to gain, if you don't have a lot of money, and you're looking to just get your feet wet in the FBA game, then absolutely books is a good opportunity for you. But do not get sidetracked to the end goal, right? The end goal is to operate wholesale, private label, sell tons of units through FBA. The end goal is not to be ordering truckloads and sorting through gaylords of used books. That is not the end goal, right? That is a dirty job. There's good money to be had in it, very high return on investment, but it's very challenging to scale. I'm yet to meet a bookseller other than these huge booksellers like uh, that sell brand new books. I, I'm trying to think of one off the top of my head on Amazon, but I'm yet to you meet a used bookseller who's doing multi-million dollars a year in sale, just because it's very complicated to do that. You gotta sort through literally tens of thousands of books to get a hundred, couple hundred books to sell. So yeah, don't get me wrong, the ROIs are great, but the work entailed with it is very, very, very labor intensive. So yes, if you have a little bit of money, absolutely start selling some books. Some good ways to find high ROI products. Put in the work, put in the work. If you're waiting for someone to just hand you a bunch of great ROI products, don't get me wrong, people do sell lists out there. Well, I don't sell lists, but put in the work. Just put in the work, spend the time, start scanning stuff. Go to your local store, start scanning stuff. Reach out to wholesalers, start scanning lists and UPC scrapers. Put in the work and the products will appear, I promise you. This is a, the beginning, the early on stages of your Amazon business are sweat equity investment, right? You need to be putting the work in or you're not going to build this. Most people, I get a ton of messages weekly like, hey, I just started yesterday. I'm looking to bring on three VAs. It's like, what? Like, what? Three VAs? You started yesterday. You don't even know what to do yet. What do you need three VAs for? You know, you need to train yourself, teach yourself how to do this stuff. Because if you get three VAs, they're going to be doing right, doing wrong. Doesn't You don't know. You have no idea because you've never done it. You don't understand the processes. Dion's opening an Amazon account next week. Noah said, smash that like button, everyone. Appreciate you, Noah. 
Um, should should we make different accounts for wholesale and private label? All right, so uh, we prefer to sell our wholesale and our private label products on one account, right? Because we're trying to grow our account health and grow our our customer feedback, so we could become a larger seller, get better buy box prioritization, all of that good stuff. So we prefer to do them on both. Some people prefer to split them. When it makes it easier to split them is if you plan on selling it in the future. It's just much easier to split the reports between two different Amazon accounts, which is the goal for a lot of people, to sell these private label uh, companies. And now also his second question was, is that an issue creating a second account? So Amazon actually now allows second accounts, but you just have to communicate with them. And there's a kind of like a stipulation. You cannot sell the same products on both accounts or both accounts will get suspended. So if you're selling, like I got this, this roll of tape here. If you're selling rolls of tape on account A and you're selling rolls of tape on account B, then your account will get suspended. This is Khalid. He said, what is the difference between a repricer and Amazon automatic pricing? So Amazon automatic pricing is their repricer. Right, but it's nowhere near as good as some of the repricers on the market. What it does is you set minimums and maximums and it's supposed to work in between there. But I personally don't like it. Also, it's very no vice, right? And it's not reading all of the other things on the listing. Um, so I suggest not using it. They're essentially both repricers, but what Amazon's automatic pricing does not do, um, these other repricers do do. So I suggest just going in, making the investment, getting one of these automatic repricers. Um, actually at the bottom of this video, there'll be a repricer uh, link to it that everybody can use. Thoughts on selling electronics from FBA? We do sell some electronics. We're not really heavy in the electronics because they have a very high return rate. Electronics are, are about 15% similar to what apparel are. So we prefer to stay away from electronics. It's just not our cup of tea. All right, so this is a great question. And really, I could just point to a YouTube video that's going to be right here, and you could click on it and answer it, but I'll answer it uh, publicly for everybody as well. Um, so this guy or gentleman or woman has been selling on Amazon and having some trouble selling against Amazon retail. So they're saying that Amazon is competing for the buy box on listings that they're on, and Amazon is dominating it. They're not getting into the buy box. What do we look for on the Keepa chart to know that it's worth selling against Amazon. Sometimes they share the buy box and sometimes they don't. Yes, so that's what you were looking for on the keep a chart. First, how frequently are they on the listing? If they're on the listing, let's say 20% of the time, and that 20% hasn't been in the past three months, I'm all over that listing. I'm gonna analyze past five years, look at it. Okay, they dropped out seven, eight months ago, having come in, not even for a day, two days. Let me go heavy on this listing because most likely they're not gonna come back on. Another one to look out for is when their price, the orange line, is higher than the buy box price. So if that's the case, then absolutely I'm all over that listing because they never, historically, after looking at the Keepa chart, they're not dropping their prices to match the buy box price. They just, they don't on those specific listings. Listings to look for to stay away from are listings where Amazon is consistent all the time and you hover over the buy box and they're winning it all the time on Keepa. When you're hovering over those little purple dots, and, and Keepa is showing you that Amazon buy box, Amazon buy box, Amazon buy box, then that's not something you wanna get into either. Another listing to stay away from when Amazon's on the listing is when the orange Amazon uh, bar is lower than the buy box price, meaning that when they are on the listing, they're always selling it cheaper than everybody else. Another listing to stay away from is a listing that only Amazon has been selling on historically for multiple months at a time. Right, because that's a good indication that there's you may be able to create the listing, but most likely you will get kicked off of it. All right, do you have to buy directly from the brand? You can. I prefer to buy from wholesalers and distributors. I, I from my past seven years of experience, wholesalers and distributors are definitely, definitely less expensive than brand direct. Sometimes you do get some great brand direct deals if you communicate with them, but from my experience, definitely I prefer wholesalers and distributors. So anybody who will or lives in or will be in the Florida area next week, I'm talking April 7th will be in Orlando. Free meetup, come hang out. 
It's at the Rocks Bar inside, I think the, I don't know, it's on our Instagram, check it out. But it's at the Rocks Bar in Orlando. Come hang out with us. Then we will be in Miami, free meetup, April 9th, April 10th. Come hang out with us. It's going to be crazy. We put together this amazing presentation. We're going to be delivering the heat to y'all. I appreciate you coming, hanging out with me for Sunday Sessions Episode 9. What an experience it's been. I appreciate each and every one of you. I'll catch you on the flip side. Stay grateful and stay lit.